drinking some tea. We're gonna get into this practice. Let's get our yoga mats. Good morning, Grand Rising. do a yoga flow, a yoga stretch, and then um, I'll play the singing bowl and we'll meditate. We're just going to warm up our body and just wake up. We got some tea. Down. 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 Down.
Cobra. Feel that 
stretch. Good morning, Dave. Down. I can't. 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 I
the corpse pose, go ahead and lay, close your eyes, get comfortable, everything that your body is telling you. Feel that energy. Feel the, vibra the vibration coursing through your body. What's your body telling you? Grand Rising family, Grand Rising. You should be in corpse, you should be relaxing. We're gonna continue reading the chapter from All About Love. Where we left off. When I was her age, I was frightened by lies. This is page 36. They confused me and they created confusion. Other kids poked fun at me because I was not good at lying. In the one truly violent episode between my mother and father, he accused her of lying to him. Then there was the night an older sister lied and said she was babysitting when she was actually out on a date. As he hit her, our father kept yelling, don't you lie to me, while the violence of his response created in us a terror of the consequences of lying. It did not alter the reality that we knew he did not always tell the truth. His favorite way of lying was withholding. His motto was just remain silent. When asked questions, then you will not get caught in a lie. The men I have loved have always lied to avoid confrontation or take responsibility for inappropriate behavior. In Dorothy Dinnerstein's groundbreaking book, The Mermaid and the Monitor, Monitor Sexual Arrangements in Human Malaise, she shares the insight that when a little boy learns that his powerful mother who controls his life really has no power within a patriarchy, it confuses him and causes rage. 
lying becomes one of the strategic ways he can act out and render his mother powerless. Lying enables him to manipulate the mother even as he exposes her lack of power. This makes him feel more powerful. Males learn to lie as a way of obtaining power and females not only do the same, but they also lie to pretend powerlessness. In her work, Harriet Lerner talks about the ways in which patriarchy upholds deception, encouraging women to present a false self to men and vice versa. In Dorothy Hollander's 101 Lies Men Tell Women, she confirms that while both women and men lie, her data and the findings of other researchers indicate that men tend to lie more and with more devastating consequences. For many young males, the earliest experience of power over others comes from the thrill of lying to more powerful adults and getting away with it. Lots of men shared with me that it was difficult for them to tell the truth if they saw that it would hurt a loved one. Significantly, the lying many boys learn to do to avoid hurting mom or whomever becomes so habitual that it becomes hard for them to distinguish a lie from the truth. This behavior carries over into adulthood. Often, men who would never think of lying in the workplace lie constantly in intimate relationships. This seems to be especially the case for heterosexual men who see women as gullible. Many men confess that they lie because they can get away with it. Their lies are forgiven. To understand why male lying is more accepted in our lives, we have to understand the way in which power and privilege are accorded men simply because they are males within a patriarchal culture. The very concept of being a man and a real man has always implied that when necessary, men can take action that breaks the rules that is above the law. Patriarchy tells us daily through movies, television, and magazines that men of power can do whatever they want, that it's this freedom that makes them men. The message given males is that to be honest is to be soft. The ability to be honest and dishonest, the ability to be, on, to, to be dishonest and indifferent to the consequences makes a male hard separates the men from the boys. John Stoltenberg's book, The End of Manhood, a book for men of conscience, analyzes the extent to which the masculine identity offered men as the ideal in patriarchal culture is one that requires all males to invent and invest in a false self. From the moment little boys are taught they should not cry or express hurt, feelings of loneliness or pain, that they must be tough they are learning how to mask true feelings. In worst case scenarios, they are learning how to not feel anything ever. These lessons are usually taught to males by other males and sexist mothers. Even boys raised in the most progressive loving households where parents encourage them to express emotions, learn a different understanding about masculinity and feelings on the playground, in the classroom, playing sports, watching television. They may end up choosing patriarchal masculinity to be accepted by other boys and affirmed by male authority figures. In his important work, Rediscovering Masculinity, Victor Seidler stresses, when we learn to use language as boys, we very quickly learn how to conceal ourselves through language. We learn to master language so that we can control the world around us. Even though we learn to blame others for our unhappiness and misery in relationships, we also know at some unspoken level how our masculinity has been limited and injured as we touch the hurt and pain of realizing how little we seem to feel about anything. Estrangement from feelings makes it easier for men to lie because they are often in a trance state, utilizing survival strategies of asserting manhood that they learned as boys. This inability to connect with others carries with it an inability to assume responsibility for causing pain. This denial is most evident in cases where men seek to justify extreme violence toward those less powerful, usually women, by suggesting 
they are the ones who are really victimized by the female by females regardless of intensity of the male masquerade inwardly many men see themselves as the victims of lovelessness like everyone they learned as children to believe that love would be present in their lives although so many boys are taught to behave as though love does not matter in their hearts they yearn for it that yearning does not go away simply because they become men lying as one form of acting out is a way they articulate ongoing rage at the failure of love's promise to embrace patriarchy they must actively surrender the longing to love patriarchal masculinity requires of boys and men not only that they see themselves as more powerful and superior to women but that they do whatever it takes to maintain their controlling position this is one of the reasons men, more so than women, use lying as a means of gaining power in relationships. A commonly accepted assumption in a patriarchal culture is that love can be present in a situation where one group or individual dominates another. Many people believe men can dominate women and children yet still, and children yet still be loving. Psychoanalyst Carl Jung insightfully emphasized the truism that where the will to power is paramount, love will be lacking. Where the will to power is paramount, love will be lacking. Where the will to power is paramount, love will be lacking. Talk to any group of women about their relationships with men no matter their race or class, and you will hear stories about the will to power, about the way men use lying, and that includes withholding information as a way to control and subordinate. And we'll leave it there, because that's a whole mouthful for six in the morning, bell hooks. <laughs> I'm gonna close you out so that I can enter my cork state and relax and, and set my intentions for today. I pray that, that you reflected. I pray that you feel strong. I pray that, that you keep moving, that you keep moving, that you keep showing up for yourself, for your practice, for your rituals, for your dreams, for your goals. on to get into this corpse
feeling good. I'm just gonna scroll through and see the comments. Oh, I meant to, I'll post in the comment the title of the song and the artist. Mm -hmm.